Welcome, and thank you everyone for joining us for this concise and informative discussion by Dr. Michael Wald. Dr. Wald, you have many degrees and certifications in the areas of nutrition and health, including two board certifications in nutrition. You are a doctor of chiropractic with a master's in nutrition, and you are a certified nutritional specialist. You've also published successful books on natural health, and right now we will be discussing the benefits of juicing. Okay, so we have a question from Deborah. Deborah wants to start juicing fruits and vegetables, but does not know how to begin. She believes that juicing is very healthy. She hopes that juicing will improve her health and bad diet and help maintain her weight loss. Any comments okay. on this? Yeah, sure. So Deborah, thanks for the question. Um, the first thing I should say is that juicing is important, more or less for different people, but it's not a substitute for a balanced diet for that person. Of course, the question then is, what's a balanced diet and what's balanced? Well, that depends on a person's needs. So depending on your health concerns, there may be different nutritional uh, items in the diet and or supplementation that a person would want to focus on. What's so beneficial, Sonny, about uh, juicing is that, as we all know, uh, juicing is in a liquid form and it's, it's quite easy to drink that and get a tremendous amount of nutrition and a variety of fruits or vegetables, depending on the types of emphasis that we have on what's in it. So in terms of how to juice, well, sometimes we'll juice uh, and we'll want to keep the fiber in, and other times we'll make juicing and we want it, the, the fruits and vegetables compressed and then the fiber removed. So. Uh, Persons that keep the fiber in would want to do that if they have health concerns that require fiber, uh, both um, insoluble and soluble forms of fiber. Let's say someone has a cholesterol problem. You know, you'd want to leave the fiber in mm -hmm. because fiber helps to remove cholesterol from the, uh, the large intestine and, and move it out of the body so it doesn't have a chance to be resorbed. And uh, fiber obviously moves the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, fiber acts as, acts as a substrate or a material that uh, the bacteria act upon in the intestinal tract. So without fiber for the, for the normal bacteria to act on, very important chemicals um, known as short-chain short chain fatty acids like caprylic acid is one of them, won't be produced. So you need the fiber. And then those acids, uh, they're extremely health, healthy, even anti-cancer for the intestinal tract. So there are times to leave the, the fiber in. Now other times, if someone is extremely nutritionally depleted, uh, we will, uh, and usually that means they have health concerns that are extremely uh, and, um, well, dangerous, so like cancers and autoimmune diseases, they need very high levels of various nutrients. And you might want to leave the fiber out because the fiber also being a fiber absorbs water if it's the soluble fiber and that can fill you up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, or sometimes my, a person might leave the fiber in for one of the juices one day and then another time of the day they'll have the, the fiber out uh, so that the body doesn't have to uh, be filled up with the fiber. Now in terms of what should be in the juicing, well that depends again on the person's health. If someone has diabetes, for example, I'm not gonna have them juice with a bunch of fruits, you know, which is uh, sugar. Although um, fruit itself in the form of a fruit for a diabetic in almost every case doesn't affect blood sugars in adverse ways because there's natural fiber in the fruit, there's phytonutrients, there's hundreds if not tens of thousands of chemical compounds, vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, for example. And uh, it's best that that person gets a really high concentration. So again, you would emphasize that without fiber. Mm. Um, now the types of things, do we use spinach? Do we use this form of lettuce, that form of lettuce? Do we use beets? Do we use apples? Again, the specific types of things that would be in the juice should be based on your actual nutritional needs. And if you're doing a detoxification, for example, or pH management, you're gonna to wanna to get that precise. And that's something that a practitioner like myself focuses on to make sure that you're juicing the right stuff. And you also wanna make sure that the so-called right stuff is not um, messing up your chemistry. So you always wanna manage the chemicals uh, in the, in the uh, well, the compounds, I should say, in forms of the fruits and vegetables and certain ratios of them. So for example, a common mistake that people make with juicing is they'll say to me, uh, Dr. Wald, I'm juicing this, that, and I, I put two or three carrots in there. So uh, carrots um, cause, um, 
issues with blood sugar. Mm. They are very high in what's called the uh, glycemic index. That means when you when you eat the, the carrots, particularly if you've stripped them of fiber, uh, which generally makes uh, the blood sugar um, more stressfully increase, uh, that can create issues. So it doesn't mean a person can't have a, the carrots, but maybe it should be just one carrot. And then depending on the size and thickness of the carrot, maybe it's just a half of a carrot. Yeah. So again, it's a little tricky, uh, and then certain um, uh, fruits or vegetables might not be indicated with certain medications that the person is on. Um, I'm not really aware of any foods in the, in the juicing that might be impacted by certain nutritional supplements. I don't think there are any interactions there that I can think of. But in summary, Deborah, uh, we want to know what your health issues are, determine what specific types of fruits and or vegetables uh, should be in your juicing, how often the juicing should be done, and what does the rest of your diet look like. But yes, you are right that uh, the opportunity there with juicing is a high amount of natural vitamins, minerals, and, and enzymes. Um, that's another reason why people tend to juice, study because they, they want higher degrees of natural enzymes in plants, like papaya and pineapple, for example. And these enzymes are anti-inflammatory and they help digestion. And they're, again, super rich in uh, antioxidants and other phytonutrients many of which have been studied and shown to have anti-cancer properties, immune modulating proper properties, and, and many other health benefits. Mm -hmm. so, so juicing is something that I usually do with every patient in different ways to match their needs. Okay, great. Thank you, Dr. Wolf. Very informative. Thank You're you. welcome.